Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and today, as you can see, it's time for me to give my final verdict for Asus's uh, first generation of all-in-one water cooling solutions. They're Ruo, Ruo, and they have a big brother called Ruojin. It's, I know, it's uh, kind of a tough, uh, tough word to pronounce outside of Mars or Venus, right? Uh, but on planet Earth, we try to pronounce as good as we can. So, Ruo and Rujin. Uh, Ruo 240 is what I'm going to be reviewing today here. Hopefully, they'll change the name up a little bit. I mean, it's a pretty hard word to pronounce and a little bit hard to market, I guess. Uh, but anyway, 170 to 180 euros. Should you buy it or not? Is it meant for you or not? That's what I'm going to try and figure out in today's video in 2020. I know, I'm a little bit late here, uh, but better late than never, right? Anyway, I've been using this uh, for quite some time now, uh, testing this on multiple uh, PCs, on, you know, Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs. Uh, it's pretty much uh, perfect for uh, all of those. Now, it is a 240, so meaning two, two 120 millimeter fans. Uh, that's the size of the radiator here. And you can expect the same performance from all of the all-in-one uh, water cooling solutions out there. And, you know, it all depends how big the radiator is. And that's pretty much it, right? Everything else, you know, kind of varies uh, from the fan, the fan speed, the temperature of your room, the temperature of your case. There's so much variables. Uh, it is a decent, uh, decent cooling solution overall, right? But what makes it so expensive is what you want to ask, right? So, first of all, I mean, looking at it, why on earth did Asus decide to go with uh, non-RGB fans is my first question. Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> this is my, my, my question to them. Why? why, why? Guys, why did you not put RGB on the fans? I mean, I get it, it looks nice in all black, but everybody loves colors. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the uh, CPU block has RGB going on uh, on it, right? And it's a pretty expensive water cooling solution. So why not RGB? That's a real question mark for me. Uh, but anyway, decent fans overall. I mean, nothing really do major, right? Uh, but Asus's own fans, Hopefully they'll add RGB in the future revisions, right? In Ruo 2, 240 or something like that, right? Uh, but what makes it really special, of course, is the water block itself and the LCD that is built into it. I guess that's the main marketing point of this uh, water cooling solution that they uh, did, right? Now the Rujin has a blocky block, uh, CPU block design, which is kind of odd i don't really like it that much but it does have a fan in it so they kind of help um, with the airflow uh, for the mosfets for the motherboard mosfets so so the mosfets would stay cooler uh, than they would without the fans right but if your if your case has any sort of ventilation it shouldn't be an issue anyways and i'm not a fan of really small fans so you know, do they start to glog up and, you know, start making some really rattling noise after a year or two or three of use, right? Uh, that remains to be seen, but I'm kind of glad that they didn't have any fans on this cheaper model here. Uh, now, what it does have is an LCD screen, and I do have some things to say about it. I mean, first of all, it looks pretty amazing, right? It is cool, uh, but it's only cool when it actually works well. So the, the main question is, why couldn't they have the LCD screen uh, be a circle, right? A proper OLED, I guess, right? Uh, the LCD screen is actually a, a tiny, uh, small little box here and that you can program. You can add your own uh, JPEGs or your own GIFs to it. And uh, that's all neat, but it works best, right? If it's uh, a logo on a black background, right? So that's how it works the best. Uh, now you can add a video or a, just a JPEG, it just doesn't, it looks kind of awkward, right? Uh, but it does work, right? Uh, now with the video, it's uh, only it only takes GIFs, which is uh, kind of sad to see, because it means you have to know how to make a GIF, how to make a GIF in a certain size, in a certain uh, 
you know it has to be under one megabyte uh, big right so it's really limiting the stuff there and it's like a slow motion <laughs> it kind of, it feels like five five frames per second uh, i don't really know what they were thinking with that uh, to be honest right hopefully they'll improve it maybe make the entire led like a screen right so it wouldn't be just a small little box right but it's something it works right and it's kind of kind of cool uh, when it works well and it's kind of awkward when it doesn't right uh, but yeah you can um, change out uh, different stuff uh, there so what i would have loved to see is that the program itself right would have you know managed everything for you right so you just take a mp4 right and you tell it to where to cut the start and the stop right so you have a small little loop of your favorite video clip easily right you don't have to go into i don't know uh, adobe premiere render it out and go into adobe photoshop make it a gif and you know see that it's under 240 frames or whatever it was right uh, so i mean <clears throat> there's so much limitations and it's not meant for everybody right you really have to do know what you're doing and even if you finally make it happen it doesn't really look that impressive in slow motion with really pixelated graphics right <laughs> uh, for the video right and uh, yeah of course you can make it display all sorts of different temperatures voltages and stuff like that and that looks um, pretty neat on it as well uh, plus you, there's also another section that you know you can take a template background there's three template backgrounds and then you can write um, any text on it that you want but it's a really small text, really hard to see. It's pretty pointless, pretty pointless. And you can't add your own background. What? Why? <laughs> so that's, and of course, if you can ha add your own JPEG, then why on earth would you just, you're gonna write your text on the JPEG, right? In Photoshop, then add it on this device, right? You don't really need that third section where you can, you know, just write something on it, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, for 170, 180 euros, I mean, yeah, if you want a cooling solution with a display that you can a little bit modify, right, uh, why not, right, but if that, you know, isn't a real game changer for you, there's definitely better options out there uh, than the Yuo 40. It's good for what it is, a little bit expensive, and the LCD is a bit of a meme. Anyway, uh, that's gonna be it for my review. My final score is going to be a decent 8 out of 10. And uh, yeah, definitely the LCD screen needs uh, needs a little bit updating, right? It needs to be the entire uh, circle, right? And it needs to be proper 30 to 60 FPS, right? And um, yeah, of course, it could be a little bit cheaper uh, like this, right? If the whole screen would be like 30 to 60 fps then i would say 170 euros is pretty decent even uh, but anyway yeah uh, that's it for my quick little review hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions leave them down below in the comment section if you like the video leave a like anyway see you later ciao for now